Good morning, and welcome back to my utmost for his highest. Where we try to focus on God at the moment of the day. Block out of our mind all the horrible, terrible things that's going on in the world around us that we can't do anything about. Except pray and hold on. Right here, what we're doing is the most important thing that we can do. Ever. Because the only thing that's going to get us through the times that's coming upon this world. Oh, March 16th. The Master will judge. A little scary. Master implies authoritarian figure and judge implies a court action. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. This is true. Second Corinthians 5.10. And believe me, you better get in, in, in line now. Because according to the Levitical law that God handed down to Moses, I'd be dead so many times. Stoned to death by the hand of my own people. I mean, I'm like Paul. I definitely am the chief of all sinners. There's no horrible thing I probably haven't participated in. Well, never killed anybody. But I've hated and wished people dead, and that's just as bad. That's what the Lord taught us. Go on with our lesson, though. Paul says that we must all, preachers and other people alike, appear before the judgment seat of Christ. But if you will learn here and now to live under the scrutiny of Christ's pure light, your final judgment will bring you only delight in seeing the work God has done in you. Terms like the uh, being under the scrutiny of Christ's pure light used to just terrify me, and I would hate the thoughts of it even though I loved God and had been saved. But the fact of the matter is, I was holding back parts of my life that were dirty and corrupt and ugly and sinful, and I certainly wouldn't want the light of Christ shining on that. I thought I could keep that head back in the back. You gotta let that all go. The light of Christ shines everywhere on everything, and it uh, brings all the things that's in the darkness to light. Live constantly reminding yourself of the judgment seat of Christ, then walk in the knowledge of the holiness he has given you, tolerating a wrong attitude toward another person, causes you to follow the spirit of the devil. No matter how saintly you are, one carnal judgment of another person only serves the purposes of hell in you. Bring it immediately into the light and confess, O oh Lord, I have been guilty there. If you don't, your heart will become hardened through and through. That has happened to so many of us that continually, day after day, participate and knowingly participate in the sin of addiction and so many other things that we know we shouldn't be doing, but we go on and do it. That is, that is how it is. Mm. Mm. Bring it immediately. The carnal law of the, excuse me, the carnal judgment of another person only serves the purposes of hell in you. Wow. Back up and read that whole thing. Tolerating a wrong attitude toward another person causes you to follow the spirit of the devil, no matter how saintly you are. That's a tough one. Only carnal judgment of another person only serves the purposes of hell in you. Bring it immediately into the light and confess, Oh Lord, I have been guilty there. And I'm confessing right now, I've been guilty of disliking people over things that they've done that they can't change and they can't help. And I've been wrong. Sarah Jane, I'm sorry. I apologize. If you don't, your heart will become hardened through and through. We talked about that, and that's what I've done to myself over the years. I had to go to prison to remove the callus from my heart. And it wasn't going to prison that did that. That only made it worse. It's that I actually got in there and got my mind clear, got focused, and, and got right with God. Prison just happened to be the format that the Lord chose to use. 
One of the penalties of sin is our acceptance of it. It is not only God who punishes for sin, but sin establishes itself in the sinner and takes its toll. Addiction, brother. Man, addiction. Think about it. Cigarettes. All of it. No struggling or praying will enable you to stop doing certain things, and the penalty of sin is that you gradually get used to it until you finally come to the place where you no longer even realize that is a sin. No power except the power that comes from being filled with the Holy Spirit can change or prevent the inherent consequences of sin. Ben right there, hallelujah, but thank God, thank God, because I was saved as a young man. I was never happy as, or complacent as a junkie or an addict. I was miserable. I mean, I've been in trap houses. I've sat there and smoked open, got high, and prayed under my breath, Lord God, please help me out of this. Lord God, don't let this end here. Lord God, I mean, just madness. But the spirit inside me was crying out and warring against my flesh, warring and crying out against my spirit. This is the nature of sin, and it starts with one disobedient act that you know is wrong, and that's how relapse happens. But the thing after this, since you've been that far into sin, and you relapse, that whole that, you ain't got a monkey on your back, that's a gorilla, and it comes right back, 360 pounds, sitting on your shoulder going, wake up, that's the nature of addiction. And we can never become, let allow ourselves to be comfortable with sin, with any sin. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, 1 John 1, 7, for many of us, walking in the light means walking according to the standard we have set up for another person. The deadliest attitude of the Pharisees that we exhibit today is not hypocrisy, but that which comes from unconsciously living a lie. Woo! Man, I was just talking to somebody the other day about living in denial. That's amazing. Because what's the one sin that God can't forgive you of? The one you won't confess. The one you won't admit to. You don't have to admit it to the world, but you've got to admit it to yourself. And you've got to admit it to God. And that's the only way you get forgiveness of it. I love y'all. Thank you for spending time with me. I really appreciate I noticed I've got a regular few people watching each and every day, and that means so much to me. Thank you so much for spending time with me, and I hope my words can be of some value to somebody somewhere. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Peace.